I'm good at that in person. I have a hard time doing it in writing. The biggest problem we have is no one knows we exist. If you love us, please tell a friend. And like, that's so easy in person, but it's so hard for me in an email. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Snyder, and this is the Product Boss Podcast. I've helped launch and grow thousands of product-based businesses, even one of my own. And over the last 20 years, I've seen behind the scenes of businesses just like yours. Whether they are makers, manufacturers, artists, or food and beverage businesses, I have spent so many hours studying it all. I've discovered what makes them successful, what mistakes they could have avoided, how did they turn their ideas into a successful business, and what are the strategies that they have used to make more sales and be discovered by more customers. And this is what this show is all about. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking to become a million dollar product boss, I'm here to give you the permission to chase your dreams, no matter how big or small. All you need is the right mindset, a little courage, strategy, and support, and you too can be the next million dollar product boss. Let's do this. Hey, hey, product bosses, we are back with another exciting coaching session for you today. But before I do that, I just want to ask you if you are currently following the show. We used to say back in my day, we used to say, are you subscribed to the show? But now since there's been some changes, it's that little follow button at the top where you just have to hit that plus where you follow the show. Now, the reason I ask you this before I'm even kicking off is something that I learned from somebody who worked at Apple themselves is that Apple changed the algorithm on downloads of your podcasts to your devices. And the craziest thing is, is if you have not listened to five episodes, it will automatically stop you from following the show and stop the downloads. So if you're like, why haven't I seen the product boss on my phone? It's because we air two episodes a week. That means that if you went on vacation, which I did in the summer, and sometimes we take a little pause from podcasts and you missed two and a half weeks of shows, we are no longer going to show up on your phone. So I say all this because just as a little tidbit, if you want to know and you want it to come to your phone every time we release a new coaching episode, which we do once a week, and we also have a Monday episode, which is whether it's an interview or something about life or lifestyle or marketing tip, you know, whatever we do on our Monday episodes, if you want to make sure that those come to your phone, do do me a favor and make sure that you follow the show and listen, any other shows that you listen to, make sure you're following them too. That is my little Apple security update and what happened. Okay. All right, cool. So if you follow the show, awesome. Now let's get back to it. So today I'm chatting with Billy of Billy Soaps. And so Billy is business partners with her dad and I've been able to work with them inside of my inner circle mastermind for the last six months. And it's been truly incredible. Now together, Billy and her dad, they sell high quality, scientifically backed natural skincare products to help you feel confident and comfortable in your skin, no matter what your skin type is. And she's just an incredible human being. She is so, so smart. She's a background in biochemistry and actually came up with her product idea while she was knitting one day. And what's even crazier is that she's actually created a multi six figure business without knowing how to market. She like admits to it. She's like, I don't know about marketing, but I just sell, I sell my product and it's awesome. Right. Isn't that just amazing? So now her and her dad are feeling pretty tired from the way that they have been selling over the years because they have been selling in person and they have been traveling to sell direct to their customers. And so Billy is really wondering how she can start to pivot more to an e-commerce model, right? More how she could start to sell more online versus having to always sell in person and how she can start to really up level her marketing so that she can grow her business and reach that seven figure mark in a little bit of an easier way. So that's exactly what we're going to try and figure out today. Let's dive in. Hey friend. Okay. In case you missed it, HubSpot's inbound conference is happening in Boston from September 18th to the 20th, and you do not want to miss it. And let me tell you why. Okay. I'm so excited for the speaker lineup. Let me tell you who I will be sharing the stage with. I mean, not at the same time, but maybe hopefully at the same time, who even knows? Okay. Ryan Reynolds and Serena Williams will be sharing their journeys and their paths to success 
with their businesses. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is a genius marketer. Okay. And I cannot wait to hear what he has to say in his keynote. And I'm just excited and amazed to be sharing my knowledge and discussing social content strategies that will help you create content to sell your products. I mean, there's just going to be so much goodness and it's all going to be about marketing and so many other things. And it's going to be amazing. And that's why you want to be there. Cause when you come join and this is how I feel at conferences, you're going to leave and feel educated. You're going to feel inspired. You're going to feel re-energized and you're going to have networked and connected with so many other incredible business owners. It's just going to be amazing. I can't wait to see you there. Visit inbound.com to see the lineup and grab your tickets today. Hey, hey, Product Boss. Okay, so are you struggling with elevating your branding and taking your video content to that next level? If so, I have just the software for you and it's called Riverside.fm. Wouldn't it be a game changer if you could have crystal clear audio and video for your product launches, interviews, and even virtual events? With Riverside.fm, it's not just a recording platform, but your backstage pass to professional quality content creation. No more worrying about tech issues because we all know sometimes the tech gods just aren't on our side. Riverside.fm allows you to connect with influencers, collaborate with partners, and engage your audience like never before. Plus, you can easily turn your recordings into shareable content for various platforms. It's exactly what we do here at the product class. I'm actually recording on riverside.fm right now. And when you see the clips of me that look amazing and crystal clear on social media, it has been all recorded and created on riverside.fm. So it's time to grow your brand with beautiful visuals and captivating storytelling all in one place. So product boss, if you're ready to stand out in a crowded market and elevate your brand, head to riverside.fm and enter the code, the product boss, all one word to receive a 15% discount. Hey, Billy, I am so glad to coach you today. I know we've been working together inside the Inner Circle Mastermind and your business and your brand are incredible. Your business partners with your dad, which I love and got to meet him as well at our one of our retreats. So you excited about coaching? Oh, so excited. I Mastermind has been such an amazing thing. I am honored to have a one-on-one with you. Like I've been talking about it for weeks. Oh, so good. And I'm really excited to share your business because while, you know, it's called Billy Soap and you sell all these different types of products there, it's so scientifically backed. And then also the give back that you do for people. And I'll let you kind of get into what you do, what you sell and all the things. And then I'll kind of tell you why. Why I love it so much. Tell me about Billy soaps. It all started. I hated how lotion made my hands greasy. I mean, I guess we had a few of our soaps before that. It it, technically it started when that knitting craze happened, and everybody was spending too much money on yarn. And my dad was like, "This has got to stop." And so I had this great business idea where I would buy wool and wrap bars of Dove Dove soap with it. Love you, Dove butt. And um, then I would sell the those bars, and I would get to buy extra wool to knit with. And I cut up a bunch of them and I wrapped them with wool. And I was like, oh my God, this is not the right soap. I have to make soap. So then by the end of two weeks later, I had invented three kinds of soap. Uh, After doing that for about six months, uh, all of my new knitting money that I'd made selling these soaps was drying my hands out. And I was like, I need a lotion, but I hate lotion. And I hated how lotion made my hands greasy. So I invented one that doesn't. It's pretty cool stuff. You rub it on dry, rinse it off. By the time you're done, you can touch your cell phone and not leave a fingerprint. But it was actually a happy accident. The even cooler side is that for 36 hours, no matter how many times you wash, it will not disappear. I had a nurse wash her hands with sanitizer 51 times in 12 hours. It was still there at the end. That is bonkers. I actually did not know about the knitting craze that then created yes. I, I mean, the whole <laughs> story that started, started with that. And then, but it's so scientifically backed. I mean, the fact that you can use the moisturizer and it doesn't wash off is unbelievable. It, the fact that I think I didn't know about your story. I didn't know about the idea that it was like the knitting craze. And then, then the idea that you then came up with, you invented this formulation of a, of a cream that wouldn't wash off, right. That you could use and that would stay and that, like, and didn't leave the grease behind. I mean, do you have a science background? How did you figure this all out from knitting? <laughs> Proud university of North Dakota biochemistry. Uh, I have one class left to graduate. I went back after 12 years off. Ladies, if you're thinking about it, you can do it. 
and I'm almost done. And so biochemistry background, I joke about this, but I really mean it. Uh, before I wrote my recipes, I pray about it. And so I say, if you're going to ask the Lord for help, you better give him first billing. But then I have a Mensa IQ and a biochemistry background. So it's a good trifecta. <laughs> she winked at me for that one. A Mensa <laughs> IQ and a biochemistry background. We're all, everyone, if everyone's listening, they're like, well, there, go, there I go as a product boss. <laughs> no. That's not it. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I have a fashion design background and I can sew. I always say that we have a superpower and and each of us have an individual superpower, right? It might be like who you know. It might be that you have a biochemistry background that one day you were knitting and then came up with this idea. So like we all have our own superpower, the thing that like is our special element that only we have. And then it's what do you do with it? You know, mine is medicine. Truthfully, I have a real gift for knowing what people need. Like I've always been that person people come to. I, I actually was the youngest paramedic student the U.S. ever had. Kind of funny backstory. They had to go to our state legislature and ask permission because I was under 18. And they're like, if she kills somebody in clinicals, who's liable? Her dad. <laughs> and um, so I, I was educated young. But literally, he's like, I've never had a CPR class. Like, it's not me. And, um, but so medicine is mine. I've always had a really good gut for what's wrong and how I can help. And even before my company, it was like, go tell your doc, you want to ask for this, you want to ask for this test, you know? And so instead now we do it for people. We, we joke that at Billy Soap, we take products that other companies have a tough time getting right and we get them right. So we do a lotion that isn't greasy. We do, um, a CBD lotion that works in under five minutes. We have an eczema lotion that we just won a grant for FDA certification for um, that we've had kids get off prescription, do Pixent and steroids for, and it's just our lotion. So we do what other people have a tough time doing and we get it right. And, you know, it's something that I've shared with my inner circle and my grandma won't listen to this episode. So she won't know this, but um, because we haven't told my grandma, but my mom has stage four cancer and you know, people close to me know this and, um, she's been using your products, but you, and they work really well. Cause she, you know, gets sores and things like that, but you have like, um, what do you do for cancer patients in case anyone out there is listening and, and what you give back? We do free jars for anyone going through cancer, um, active treatment, or if you're end stage and are not doing treatment, um, remissive folks, we joke, we joke that it's not worth your cancer coming back to get the free jar, but for anybody <laughs> who is in those spaces, um, please. Cancer jokes. <laughs> you, you, you gotta have some, yeah. right? I know. It all started. <laughs> I was a pediatric heart patient. I had a 110 day, um, ICU step down stay and people would give me these little gifts that meant the most to me because they kind of just appear randomly. I think that's the good Lord at work. And so when we wanted to give back, we wanted to give back to someone and the pediatric heart population is really small. So we're like, what's a bigger group we could help? And unfortunately, cancer. And so we like to think that just like people gave us small gifts when I was in the hospital, our free scrubs are those little points of light out there, maybe making somebody's day. Yeah, I really... Appreciate that. So we'll, we'll link to your website and all the things and Instagram in the show notes, if anyone's listening. So let's dig into, I mean, you've done amazing things. You're doing amazing things, but I want to kind of dig into the coaching part for you. You just did a rebrand, which I remember at our, at our retreat that we, we took a look and it's so good, but it sounds like for you right now, you're looking for strategy and telling, is it that you want to go over telling your story or how can I support you? So after you got, after you did our, our website and our Instagram kind of overview, we went back and we hired somebody who did our messaging to really standardize our messaging and that it's all evergreen content. If it's not, it's posted in reels or stories that it all has that look of the new brand um, to kind of hopefully really firm up who we are and what we're saying. Um, and then our website's easier to navigate. So I feel like we're getting those pieces in play, even though, like you said, they were crazy critical, but I'm really not good at like, how do we plan from where we are now to like entering that national stage to getting what's the right mix of like, how do you involve the influencers? How do you do the affiliate marketing, do the ambassador kind of like what should come first? Do you have any tried and true like formulas on like percentage of marketing spend? Like how do you, you've done such a good job with that with the product boss. How did you decide where, when, and how much? It's a great question. Lots of trial and error just to 
throw that one out there. You have a highly successful company. And I want you to just think about marketing the same way that you think about science and formulation, right? Like you didn't nail it on your first try, correct? Yeah. Oh, no. I, well, so actually we did, which is another reason I give God the credit. You're like, actually, remember the Mensa part? <laughs> well, sorry. You know how WD-40 was their 40th attempt? We really thought that would happen with our formula. Down to the gram, it was my first attempt, which is why I say it had to be God. Like, I can't get, take credit so for that. So you know it. how WD-40 took 40 yes. times? Yes. <laughs> <figure it> <laughs> Or I think Thomas Edison said, you know, he failed 10,000 times. So you were nailing it. You you know that you nail it on some stuff, but some stuff you can't. And if because marketing might be a, a weaker muscle, it's not so much in your wheelhouse, then this is a place where you will WD-40 it, not Billy Soaps it. Okay. <laughs> when we nail it, we'll call it Billy Soaps. When we don't nail it, we'll call it WD-40. So let's talk about how you, because you're you know, are you multi six or seven figures? We're 230 last year on pace for 450 this year. So six going to seven. Great. So you're multi six figure business without knowing how to market, which is bonkers. Yeah. Like we've never sent an email ever. And like, I'm just learning that's like a giant thing. So I'm kind of excited. <laughs> like I'm just learning people need to know about right? it. Like, yeah. Can you imagine if we can figure out how to do it? Like we can be really cool. I mean, yeah. So, so I want you to just take a moment and, and process and it, the fact that you have a multi six figure business with 564 followers on Instagram and you haven't sent a single email. So congratulations on doing it all wrong and still sort of making it. <laughs> no, no, you're not doing any of it wrong. You've got something so right that like you're making money without marketing. So imagine if we pour gasoline on that, right? Imagine if we like, we actually put in the effort, what could happen? Because you said like you and your dad are feeling pretty fried. You're traveling to shows, um, but you're, you want to get out of, cause so let's back up and just quickly tell me, how are you getting in front of customers and how are you selling right now? So 90% of it is literally direct to consumer in person. It's awful. We travel and travel and travel and travel. And like with my health stuff, that's really hard. So we're trying to pivot to more e-commerce, but we're like, I was trying to think about this in the shower when I was thinking about this coaching call. I was like, you know, right now we do such a good job. If you meet me in person, I say later, like six months later, like, how's your uncle Charlie? Like, did his surgery go okay? Or, you know, did, did Evelyn, you know, did her chemo turn out? Did like, did those nausea meds I recommended like work out for her? How do I, when I go to that next phase, make my customers still feel cared for and still feel. And I was almost like, I wonder if we need to, in the beginning, our marketing guy has good strategy for like words, but maybe if we get really big, we almost have to build a community like forums or something or somewhere like Facebook lives that people can come to and take care of each other and really still take that. Like Billy soap is where you come to, to feel like we care about you. How do we, how do we make them feel that? Because we really do. Like we legitimately write down customers names and are like, okay, tonight at the dinner table, we are praying for Charlie and Evelyn. Like it's, you know, and so how do we keep that? Like we're that different because we really do care. So I think we can talk about this in two ways. One is that you can continue to care and create that feeling of personalization or a personal relationship with, but still being able to scale it. When you hold and host a community and there's lots of product bosses and there's people in our mastermind and all the things that have community that they are selling to and holding space for, it does take a ton totally of other because you have to host a community. And if anyone's been on the internet since it was invented, it's not always the greatest place, right? My mom is in, there's like a, the type of cancer she has, like she has colon cancer. So everyone please go get your colonoscopies since we're going to do this about cancer too. Um, there's a cult, it's a thing it's called colon town. It's like it's a humongous Facebook community. There are already communities with the people that you want that you do not need a host. You just need to have people talk about you in there. Okay. So I don't know that hosting, having a community that you have to build and host is necessarily the right way. We've also talked about this with like you giving medical advice, which 
you can continue to do with, you, you shouldn't, right? Or at least you should have the, talk to your doctor. Great. And so um, Tisha Trapp, who's also in the mastermind and she's been on the podcast, she gives, she has a son who's autistic and I had coached her in a call just like this. And one of the things I had given her in terms of advice was to, to bring in the community by let's, this is not for you. So don't say, don't take what I'm saying literally yet, but to name the bracelets after other kids with autism, because she has a lot of autism moms following her. And so she did this post that like went bonkers for her where she was like, I started this because of my son. And now I want you to know I'm doing it for your kids. Tell us a story. And so people share their stories and they just shared about their child. And because what she believes is like kids with autism, she's like, if you met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. They're not this, not every, all of us are individual. So she was able to create community online without actually having to hold or host a community. But the content she puts out still feels very community forward. It still feels like they are seen they are heard, they are understood. Now your product is twofold. Your product is, you know, you talked about eczema, you talk, and it's going to be FDA approved. And you talked about cancer patients. And so there is this medical form of it, which if we think about other products that perhaps started medicinal over years, it eventually became like a household product that was maybe not watered down, but it was like, it's like you trust the brand because so you're still, even though you've had this business for 17 years, like you're still in the awareness stage. Yeah. And awareness where people have, they, they will, I think if you infiltrate or get into the communities that people are aware of it, whether that's eczema, whether it's cancer patients, skin issues, nurses and doctors, you go into that world let them talk about it. And then you become the play, like the, the, the brand that they refer to the most and it's word of mouth. And then long-term, if someone just wants to buy your soap, right. Or your body scrub is because they trust the brand because the brand is trusted by medical professionals and by patients and there's actual results. So we have access to this, but it doesn't have to be a medical product. And your branding is so cute. Because that makes it still necessary to do the medical side. Like, for example, one of our investors, because we're just taking on investors for the first time, was like, you know, registering as a pharmaceutical takes so much time and so much money. And I was like, yeah, but our pain lotion, we can't even write on the bottle that that's what it does. And it grew 6,000% last year. And if we could actually clinically test it so that we can say, you know, yes, here's clinical proof that it works. How much could we sell then? You know? And so, you know, right now, all I can say is like the green bottles are pain lotion. It works under five minutes, but on the website, it is just Mary Jane's lotion. We need, we need some of the medical side without it being crazy that way. Because like you said, people have their doctors and I love that they do. I want them to have that. But if they can just come to us for some of that, pointing them in the right direction, then they can have that relationship themselves, which is ideal. There's room for all of us. Right. So like brands, like I'm just, I Googled it. So Listerine, for example, started off as a safe antiseptic, and then it eventually became over the counter mouthwash. So I think, and, and you know, this, you're already doing this pretty organically, but what I think, so if we're going to talk about how to market and how to get more people, it's awareness. So I think that the first place you start is how do you, um, for example, there are podcasts out there that are for they're, they're specific. Maybe it's a cancer podcast. Like I, I listen to one that's like the thyroid revolution. Cause like I have some things with my thyroid. So, well, I don't really technically my family does. So I'm like, let's be aware of like how to not get thyroid issues. Um, yeah. And so there's medical ones that people listen to that you could be a guest on. I know this was nerve wracking, but now you've, you've done the podcast. So where you could go on and you could talk from a science background on, on how to heal naturally, right? Maybe you're someone I'd love for you to look at in terms of her marketing is Morozco. It's, I think it's M O R O Z C O. It's a Morozco forge. She was a woman who invented for cold plunging, she created a cold plunge bath, but it started with her needs of having so many autoimmune diseases. So she is able to tell her story because you're asking me how to tell a story. Story, we teach this in, in standout society. Stories sell. 
So you might be like, I have this product and you can wash your hands 92 times and did it up. But if you told me, if you led with the story of the nurse and you're telling me the story of a nurse and, and you're telling a story, a story is going to sell. I, you know, there's this one woman and she was getting sores on her lips and she needed blah, 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 and da, 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 and it worked. And, you know, she came to me and she tried everything. Or you tell your story. I spent X amount of days in the hospital and getting better. And I realized that there was a need for this. These are all stories that are going to, that are going to solidify for people the why and the greater understanding. So with the Morosco Ice Forge, if you listen to her, you can even look up her name on um, like a podcast and find the podcast she's been on. Same thing with like Dave Asprey or Tim Ferriss, who did the, originally the four hour work week. He does all this stuff. He's very into biohacking. And you'll see people when they get on a podcast, they talk about their origin story, why they created what they created, and then how it's helpful. And then you would change that depending on who you're on. So if you're on something like eczema awareness podcast, then you would speak to a story about that and how you originated the formula is, and then how you can find natural ways. And like you saw how these kids were able to get off of the medicine because people don't want to be on the medicines and they were able to use this. And then that's why you created it. And you know, you'll give tips along the way plus the product. So I think by you starting in that way and creating awareness and, and very specific medical categories will, but it's also helpful. So I want you to find some episodes of people that are helpful that have a product. So Morosco is a really good one because she has this, these ice baths you can buy for $15,000, but she has these meditations on YouTube, right? So I may never buy her ice bath, but like I listen to her meditations when I get an R1 is a good way to tell the story and how you would be helpful on these specific. So that's going to be like, oh, Billy soap sells. And then you'll be like, here's your percentage off when you come by. So you just want to know you want to, when you pitch anyone, so this is whether you're pitching influencers, whether you're a pitch, you need it to make sense to them, why it's going to help them and their customers. You're not speaking from an I you're speaking from a them. So, you know, let's just say I had my eczema podcast. Hey, Jacqueline, I love your podcast. It's like so helpful. There's so much knowledge that's needed for eczema. Like, let's say they talk about natural ways of healing. Like, I think it's great medicinally, but there's also like these natural ways. And I love how you're teaching that. I have this product that is really helpful. It's helped people do this. I would love to share with your listeners how they can also find healing in natural ways. One of which is the product, but also I have these tips and I'd love to share it. Would that be something that would work for you? And I could send you, you know, cause if they're doing an eczema podcast, they've got eczema and I'd love to send you some products, right? And you send them like a lovely, um, gift bag of stuff that you're like, you know, this is what you would need. And then like you send it, it's the same with like a book launch. People send me their book to pre-read before I have them on the show. So then you would, you know, send them the product and they think it was cool. And be like, I can offer a discount code to your listeners. Da, 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 da. Right. So just make it about them, but don't make it like this cut and paste sort of situation. I also can tell cut and paste when they're like, I listened to episode 585 or you talked about whatever, but I'm like, okay, but just tell me how you will help my listeners. It's like, I just need to know, is this relevant to product-based business owners or is it not? If it's not, if you can't help them or you're going to talk to me about funnels and courses, it's like, well, that's not where we go, right? So there's other podcasts for that. So I think that's, I think that's, I think that's a really good way to do it. I think the second way to do it is you can always contact, like, let's say you get into, they might say no pitches, but if you know people that have cancer or eczema or they need the CBD, you might really make asks to them and say, if you're in any groups or forums, I would love for you to share this. And I can actually offer you guys a discount code, or you can tell them they can be an affiliate. So in all these in-persons that you do, you can start to what I think the secondary part, and we teach this side in there's, I think it's in multi-stream machine that we go into this one. My programs have been covered across them, right? I know. That's my next week. I have to like go through all the content and watch it all. Brand ambassador, like brand ambassadors for you might be really important where you're building an ambassador program. Paula of Clean and Dirty. She used to be in the mastermind as well. She's a multi-stream machine student. She's very good. She has Clean and Dirty as a skincare company and she has brand ambassadors. And what they do is they're the ones getting the message out and they get a discount code. So use code Jacqueline and get 15% off. And so when you use my code, they also get a kickback like affiliates. Sure. I'm totally happy to do that. 
Right. So that could be because we know word of mouth works for you and it's a no like trust. So if you can build some sort of ambassador program or um, affiliate program of people, I'm going to, I'm going to keep you on the medical. I don't want you to get into body scrubs and stuff because all that gets into normal bath and body. And I want you to stay specific of like your superpower right now. So then it's the same idea. So let's just pretend my mom decided that she was going to go on a colon town. Yeah. And I'm like, mom, like if you organically talk about Billy soaps and talk about how it's helpful to you, like, Hey, I found this product. I asked them if I can get a code for you guys. Here it is. And it feels natural and not salesy. And even if it wasn't a code, if it's just like, can you tell more people about it? You just need to ask people to talk about you because they don't know. So it might be like, even in your packaging or in your follow-up sequences, or when you meet them, be like, let people, if you know somebody else, please let them know about this product. Like not enough people know about it. And if you think it works for you, would you mind sharing it with somebody else? And you just at, make the ask. I love that. You do so much for people. I'm good at that in person. I have a hard time doing it in writing. I feel like I don't do it as well. Like, like in emails and things like in person, I'm like, the biggest problem we have is no one knows we exist. If you love us, please tell a friend. And like, that's so easy in person, but it's so hard for me in an email. Well, you don't even send emails. So it doesn't matter if you don't send it in emails. Right. You don't even send well, a single email yet. I, so. try, well, I pitched a few people. Like I wrote like a few, I, I've probably written 10 emails to like various, cause someone said that we should be trying to be featured in like people's best gift lists and best. You can, but it's not a giftable, it's not a giftable product. It's more of something that's like if self magazine was doing something on skin care and they were well, like our serum. <laughs> yeah. But like our, our serum, if you stack them up against all the best serums out there, we're better. We have 36 actives. You could not find me another serum with as many active ingredients as ours is. I don't see that as your path because the thing that the thing that you need to understand as a beauty industry Mm -hmm. is heavily reliant on trends, on Uh, models, on fashion, on, you know, whether Ava Longoria is is (laughs) correct. Yeah. So like Ava Longoria, I don't remember which, like it was Lancome or something. Right. But she's like the face of that. Or, you know, they use celebrities that were like, you're not really using that stuff, but like, thanks for marketing. So I don't want, I think even though your serum is great, I I think that your best, like we talked about, I want you to keep Coca-Cola in mind and, and Listerine where you could sell your serums and all your other products two customers that have bought in on the first part. Yeah. And if people find your serums or like, but to get like an L beauty award and things like that, you're going to have to move into the beauty category. And I don't know that you are from a marketing and brand perspective yet beauty. And I think you're, I don't know the category for it, but it's like, like, you know, not that you're Benadryl, like a Benadryl creams, I have bug bites. That's why it's like top of mind, but like, you're not there, but you're also not like the look at this model with her wrinkle fee free face because she's using your face serum. You should see my before and afters at seven days. We jokingly call it Botox in a bottle. I've had over 50 people quit their Botox for our serum. Amazing. Now we all go by. I'm telling you, it's there's nothing like it. Because I'm delayed on that one. Yes. So there are brands that started off. So there's like ones that are like acne that started off medical, like with acne or they they were formulated by nurses or dermatologists where they start that way but again there's a very trendy fashion forward aspect when you go that route that requires a different form of business and i think you're i think you can hit a million dollars i think you could hit 5 million dollars i think you can hit 10 you could hit beyond your wildest dreams by being really good at that stuff. And the other products are like your secondary products. The more people discover it and the more they get to know your brand and the more you have your before and afters and you do all these other things, I think makes sense in the evolution of the brand, but we haven't hit a million dollars yet. And I want you to hit a million dollars on these core products. Okay. Cause like our investors are all about, everybody's got dry hands. Like everybody hates how lotion makes their hands greasy. And so they want us to dump money there. They're like, that's what we want to show because that isn't a focus. That's more of a everyday brand. You know what I mean? Like a, that's more of a beauty brand. Like, isn't it? It's not though, because it's a problem solving. It, it is and it is. And it's more like Burt's Bees or not Vaseline because I know you say it's not Vaseline, but it's that Aquaphor. Yeah. Okay. It's not, it's not those, but it's in that realm. I can see that. 
more than L'Occitane. Right. Right. Which you go in and you're getting like the almond scent or the vanilla scent or the lavender scent, which you can do that, but they're, they're more of a cosmetics brand that's fashion forward versus something that has such proven results. So I think for you, I think what I see here that's happening is anything is possible. Everything is possible. You can do everything, but you're going to want to stay niche and keep your eye on the prize because my challenge to you is, can you make a million dollars in the next 12 months by honing in on your hand creams, for example, right? Your hand creams could be a core product and then there could be a couple secondary products to it. So let's say your hand cream is your hero product. And then there's like, or you've got a core line of like healing products that are, are made well, that have, you know, beneficial ingredients and stuff, but you stay out of the beauty section of it. Because even our serums, you could say, are still problem solving. Our triple C, like our local influencers, we had a radio host who had really bad acne. And I was so, so grateful. She posted before and after photos at 14 days. And I'm like, I couldn't believe she was that vulnerable to post that. But she did. And they were crazy good. And I was like, wow, like, Thank you for being willing to be vulnerable like that. Like, but even that, I guess when you say it, it is, a, it still is a problem. So I want your homework to be that you go find 10 brands out there that either originated or are on the, more on the medically beneficial side, more on the mm, medical beneficial isn't like the right terminology, but it sounds right. I, get, I know what you mean by that. I mean, you said it sounds right and you're very smart. So, but like, you know how, um, what was the acne proactive? So proactive, how it started. I remember like when I was growing up, it was like all the proactive commercials and they used all the celebrities. They're like, this is my acne. And then this is me better. You're more of a proactive type brand, whatever that is. Cause if you look at proactive now, you can actually find it on the shelves of target and they've expanded the line. But think about how many years proactive has been around. And when it was strictly like, I mean, it's been around long enough for my age, like you would call in and order over the phone and they'd mail it to you. And then remember the vending machines? Yes. Yes. And I was like, what's a phone that you call in? How do you yes. have to send a check? I know, right? I'm with you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. So, so I want you to like look to brands like that that exist. So how proactive started brands that it would be like that even now. And I'd like for you to find 10 of them. And then I'd like for you to opt into their marketing. So opt into their emails, follow them on social media, however you can hack what they're doing and pay attention to how they're marketing and what products they're marketing. So proactive will still stick to its core collection of like the actual problem solvers. Like this is your, this is the regimen that you use. They have all these other products now, but the regimen is still there. And while you may or may not be building a regimen, or maybe you do, maybe the regimen is like, use this and put the serum on top, use this and put the oil. So you may build a regimen in that they know they can buy the single product or to get the best results, they're buying this product lineup. So if you opt into 10, you follow 10 and you start to really study and understand what they're pitching how they're focusing their marketing plan. The other thing that I want you to do is to same thing about the podcast. I want you to think about either like you look up Marosco Forge, like you can look up other people. If you find these 10 brands, you could say, you could go Google their names and see if they've actually been on a podcast and you could start to listen to their stories, right? How do they tell their story? How do they tell their origination story? Like how do they talk about the product? Cause now you're going to know more of how other people are doing it. And then you'll also decide, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pitch to podcasts where my specific target audience is. And you can generalize out. So you can even go to natural healing, right? There's so many people who have like natural beauty, natural products. That could be a secondary customer for you. And you would just change your storyline a little bit for it. Then it's the idea of like, if and when you meet people, you say like, you, you can look into how you build an ambassador program or an affiliate program. And it's still word of mouth that they're now prompted to share and they're sharing in these specific groups. And just that, just that will start to bring that awareness that you're looking for without you really having to do a lot. Did you catch that? 
Okay, so Billy is looking for these big overarching strategies that will take her to the next level. But where we really need to start is with the simplest lever. My goal was not to overwhelm Billy, but rather to find the easiest path to profit for her where she can get more eyes on her business without having to fully become a marketer. We did that through finding ways for customers to know about her and her products by staying focused right? By figuring out her core collection and leaning into it and, and how she can transition that personal connection and helpfulness that she's been so successful at to the online space, right? That more one to many. So when it comes to getting the word out and building your brand awareness, sometimes you need to start small and with what's going to be the easiest change for you and then go from there. Now, Billy is going to ask about wholesale. So let's see how we can quickly address that. Okay. What about, are there any national trade shows, things like that, um, for like picking up some wholesale stockists that you recommend? I don't have any off the top of my head. I know they're so industry specific. Sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any specifically for you yet. The thing about wholesale trade shows and depending on what you have and like the category that you're in, you know, cause there's medical ones. There's, there are beauty brand ones. You'd probably want to look that up and then decide how much it costs to have a booth. If it, if it does it inside of multi-stream machine, I know. So if you want to go watch the wholesale module in there, I teach you how to find stores and how to pitch them. So you don't need to spend money on a show. You don't need to rely on fair. Okay, good. Cause we've had an account on there and you know, the hardest thing I think we struggled with before this is like, even if I talked about my product, if you went to my website, you'd never know that it's my moisturizing body scrub. Like I'd say I invented this lotion alternative and they're like, well, what does she mean? Is it her lotion? Is it her body scrub? I need to do, do you think moist, do you think it needs to be renamed or do you think moisturizing body scrub is enough of a name to show that is my lotion replacement? Do you think that's just like an ad based thing or do you think a body scrub to me sounds like it's a scrub? Right? But does moisturizing body scrub sound like Why do you scrub? call it a scrub? Because it's got sugar in it. And so it does have that exfoliating nature. Okay. So it is. So it's, so you don't have a moisturizing lotion. It's the scrub that stays on. Is that what it is? It's a, we invented a scrub that's a scrub and a lotion together. So the way you've talked about it to me is I felt like they were two products. Ah, see, then I'm doing that wrong. I have a hand cream because you said I have a, do you have a hand nope. cream that doesn't nope. wash off? That's or the hand scrub. cream is the scrub. Yes. Yeah. So I didn't know that. So you say I have a hand cream, which I just assume is a cream that I squeeze out or pump out and I rub it in my hands and you said I rinse it. Great. I'm just imagining it's like a conditioner. I rinse and then it's gone versus scrubs. And it's someone who has dealt with skin allergies and things like that. Um, I love the ones that leave like you said, like the, the, they lock in the moisture. So I do think there's a bit of a messaging confusion of when you talk about them, when you actually, Billy, you speak about it, it's confusing in how you say it out loud. So you want to figure out a way that, so it's a moisturizer plus scrub combined that locks in moisture and, and leaves you moisturized like a lotion. The moisture stays on. Yeah. Dries like, yeah. A moisturizer and scrub that dries like a lotion and will leave your hands hydrated or leave your body hydrated for, or hands, let's say, whatever you want to call it, 50 washes. So you just need to be very practical in the language and the way you speak about it is over and over because I've worked with you now for six months and I didn't know that they were two. Yes. And you didn't even know. That's clearly a messaging miss on my part. Exactly. Because I've had people say that. They're like, I've tried your lotion. And I'm like, oh, nope, that's different. Yeah. And, and so if they're the same, <laughs> our scrub right. Our so lotion. they're the same thing. It's a moisturizer plus scrub that, like you said, dries like a lotion and stays on for 50 washes. So it's a two-in-one. Kind of how they would do conditioner and shampoo, like a two-in-one. You might even think about, I know you've just read on your packaging, but you might even think about when you're marketing on your website, it says two-in-one. Two moisturizer plus scrub dries like a lotion. You do not have to reapply moisturizer for up to 50 washes or something, up to, up to 50 hand washes or something. Do you think by voicing it that way, though, we still get then people thinking if it dries like a lotion, it dries like a greasy lotion? How do we how do we get across that it does what a lotion does without the grease? You know what I mean? And so we've tried to kind of introduce the that's why we're patenting it. We're so different from other scrubs out there. Other scrubs are just scrubs. We are both. We're a two in one that has Not the best everyone of associates all. lotions with greasy. I have lotions that are not greasy, but it'll just be in your sub your sub 
information. So it'll be something that's like dries like a lotion without the grease. Or dries like the best lotion? No, because best is like, what does that mean either? But like, it just might be like dries like a lotion without, without the greasiness. Okay. I like that. And then stays hydrated for, you know, 36 hours, no matter how many times you wash. Yeah. And you can always use ChatGPT to write some of your messaging if you want to like plug it in and be like, how's the best way to use this? So, so I would say to you, that's how you get the awareness. I went over wholesale pretty quickly because Billy has our signature program, multi-stream machine. So she can dive deeper into that course for more specific information. We walk her step by step by step on how to get onto all these new sales channels. She doesn't, we don't have to like spend the time on our live call on that, but here's the main takeaway right? The main takeaway is that her current path to profit consists of two main revenue streams right now, in-person sales and her direct to consumer website. If she wanted to add a third revenue stream, her best option would be wholesale, which we have this entire mini course inside of multi-stream machine. Every module, whether we teach you about Amazon, selling on your own website, selling in person, wholesale, they're basically standalone courses of how to get up and started and on them right away. So we've got her covered inside of there. But before she considers adding a third sales channel to increase her sales, what I wanna do is dig a little bit deeper into an already existing untapped revenue stream. Hey friend. Okay. So it's podcast recommendation time and you're just like me and we love podcasts. So I'm so excited to share with you one of my favorite shows right now, which is imperfect action hosted by Steph Taylor and brought to you by the HubSpot podcast network, the audio destination for business professionals. Now, if you want marketing insights without the fluff, you're going to want to tune in because Steph really dives into the meat and potatoes of marketing. I mean, I loved one of her most recent shows where it was talking all about audience growth and she shares her two part formula so that growing your audience doesn't have to feel so hard. Plus, she even shares how you can fix it and fix your current strategy if you only have one part of the formula and not the other. I mean, she's like, it's two parts, but I'm even going to show you how to do it with one part. This episode is so good and was an absolute game changer in my strategies. And it's filled with real actionable advice from a marketing pro. Listen to Imperfect Action wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, hey, product boss. Okay. So you know that I am on a mission to empower women all over the world to build product-based businesses that give them the security and freedom to build their dream business, which will also lead to the life of their dreams. So I know that I can help you do this by teaching you how to nail the core four foundational pillars of a standout business. And it's going to turn your business into something that feels like it's kind of struggling along or limping along to standing out in a crowded market and getting more customers. So I am so excited to invite you to join my free masterclass, your four-step playbook to stand out in a crowded market and get more customers so that you can grow your business no matter where you sell. In just 90 minutes, I'm going to teach you the core four foundational pieces your business might be missing, how to stop wasting time and money on things that don't work, and what to focus on instead. I mean, these are proven ways to build an audience that buys from you and that tells their friends about you. So what I want to do is I want to unlock what can be blocking you from growing a profitable business and how you can turn it around pretty instantly. All you have to do is come join me inside of this totally free masterclass. Head to theproductboss.com slash standout to get access. Again, that's theproductboss.com slash standout. Now back to the show. Second part to go over really quickly is, do you have an email list? Uh, yes. I didn't even know I did, but apparently Shopify and Square keep them for me. And so... So how, do you know how many people are on there? I think it's like 3,600. Great. You can make a lot of money off of emails. So again, in Multi-Stream Machine, I share with you emails on automation and emails for promotion. And there's full templates in there that you can copy, paste, and drop in your own information in there. Again, you could copy, paste, give your information to ChatGPT and tell it to fill it in. So if anything, you set up your automations for the emails that you don't have to worry about. So what it's a welcome sequence. Um, that's like they opt into the list and now they're being educated through 
on what makes you stand out, why it's going to benefit them, like customer favorites. Yeah. But always make it about the customer, right? So how it's going to benefit them. So there's a welcome sequence. Then there's the abandoned cart sequence. You can win back 80, 80% of the people who abandon carts with a good welcome cart, uh, abandoned cart sequence. And we have like a three part abandoned cart sequence for you in there. There's abandoned cart, there's post purchase, all of that. So if you can at least get that set up for the people who buy and that you bring, whether it's in person, whether it's through affiliates, whether whatever it is, when you're in person with people, also collect their email addresses. So just always be building your email list. Can I ask you one specific marketing point there? Because you're so good at this. Um, one of the things we have the hardest time getting people to understand is that because we're so temperature sensitive, they need to be shipped in containers with ice. And so our shipping costs are a little higher. They're like 12 to 15 to ship rather than like five to eight, like a lot of people. I would how rather you think about how you can raise the price of your product okay. and compensate for the shipping. Okay. Do you think we could, I mean, cause right now we're like $33.95 a jar. Could we go to like $40 a jar, $42 a jar? $33.95 is a weird number. So yeah, it is, it really is. It's, it's not a number that, well, you might be again in your brain and like calculating, it's not a number that anyone is familiar with. So if you, again, in your hacking of people, and we do this in our other program, we talk about pricing and like how to figure this part out. If you can go look at other products and they don't necessarily have to be exactly your product, but what are the price breaks where it's like you go to CVS and you're going to get lotions that are $7.99, but they even have now locked up behind, they have $50 bottles of hair shampoo and all that, right? Your ideal customer I know can vary, but again, it is a specialty product and we're not an over-the-counter Lubriderm. So you will have this higher price to it. That's why it's been upbranded. And then I want you to go look and say, is it $38 that people buy it at? Is it $42? It's not. And the 99 makes your stuff cheap. So 99 is a psychological thing that if your stuff is supposed to be cheap, you use the 99. Or if you're putting stuff on sale, you do dot .99 or $99, right? Things that are higher end are usually $98, right? $48, $52. It's the same customer. So don't get scared about it. So you just have to go again. You have to look at it. And I would rather you have a free shipping threshold. We have a calculator inside of MSM that's like, how do I get to free shipping? It'll give you a an amount that you're like, free shipping on order is $75 or more, let's say which you've built it in that you know it's there. And then I would love for you to specifically you to raise your prices to compensate for shipping in there so that you can either charge less for shipping on less than your threshold or, or it meets that right. People will abandon cart when they all of a sudden see it. A shipping yes. Cost. We're seeing a bit of that. And they would rather add more product to their cart and buy more from you. They would rather buy something from you for $24 than pay you $12 for shipping because they're getting nothing for it. So to wrap up the call, you're going to hack people for all things, pricing, marketing, um, all that. You're going to hack podcast episodes and people who are on podcasts and how you can do that. You're going to get into MSM. You're going to understand the automated emails that you can be sending. You are going to capture email addresses wherever you are. So if you're doing these in-person shows, it costs us sometimes like $25, could be up to $50 to get an email address when we run ads. So if you think about all the money you're saving on marketing, every time you ask for an email, you're saving your, your, it's acquisition of leads and you're saving money by not having to pay for it. You don't need to worry about social media right now. Like that does not have to be where you put your focus. Your focus is going to be on the groups, on affiliates and ambassadors, like word of mouth. And then if, and when you can, you got to warm up your email list because you haven't really been doing it. So you, if you do start to send emails, I mean, I love a weekly email from people, but you may not send it weekly yet. Like you may have to slow, slow it because you don't want to break them. It's like, um, an algorithm thing also with emails, you can end up in spam and promotion. So you might so you, you'll just start slow. So maybe it's like one every other week right now, you'll get your open rates and then you go from there. And then that's, that's a whole other coaching call on like marketing and emails, but we do cover 
a lot of the email stuff inside of multi-stream machine. So I think that that would just be a, a really all encompassing place to get you started to be doing just, you know, just a 5% improvement to your business can, could be tenfold in your revenue. So instead of looking for like all these huge moves, it's more of how do we get you these smaller, how do we pull these levers or smaller moves that are easier for you to do that then will have way bigger results long-term. Do you see why you not only need an email list, but once you have an email list, you need to actually be sending emails? Oh my goodness, if I could shake you by your shoulders, send the emails, my friend. Now, Billy has 3,600 people on her email list who have bought from her but she has not emailed anyone. This is a gold mine for potential repeat customers and untapped revenue. Whenever possible, you want to lean into your existing customer base because getting new people to discover you and warming them up or building that no like trust factor is a lot harder and takes a lot more time than emailing those who have previously purchased from you. Plus, according to the book, Marketing Metrics, businesses have a 60% to 70% chance of selling to an existing customer, while for a potential new customer, it's only five to 20%, right? So that's like, you have a 60 to 70% chance of selling to someone who's already bought from you. More than that five to 20% chance, pretty wild, right? So what do we wanna do? We wanna tap back into our current customers. So sometimes when you're looking for a quick way to increase your immediate sales, it doesn't need to be some big complex strategy or even a new sales channel, but rather tapping into your existing customer base, sending a few emails and seeing what happens. And remember, if you have an email list and aren't sending emails, you're missing out on potential revenue. And if you don't have an email list, then this is your sign to start building one now. And luckily for Billy, she's got multi-stream machine where we teach you exactly how to build an email list. Okay. And we actually also give you the templates of what emails to send. So it's a win-win for her. Before we wrap how I know that you had a discount code for product bosses and how they can buy from you and support you. So if you wouldn't mind sharing that. I would love to share. If you enter onto billysoap.com, it's spelled B-I-L-L-I-E-S-S-O-A-P.com. Hardest part is that double S in the middle. Uh, if you enter the product boss when you are checking out, I'll give you 20% off your entire cart. And since I didn't do a good job of signposting it, our our revolutionary lotion alternative is our moisturizing body scrub. Oh, and one more cool statistic, if I might, Jacqueline. Uh, we have a no questions asked return policy on everything. And over 17 years on $1.3 million in sales, we've had $414 return total. Wow. Our products really are that different and you keep them. So I love don't be it. afraid to try stuff. I love you, I know you feel like you need help with marketing, but you do have, so I'm sure people listening are like, I should try that. I should say it like that. So you're very good at marketing and now it'll just be about creating some sort of cadence and flow to marketing that is not as big of an effort on you and your dad from having to do the live in person. Cause right now you're treating it like marketing and sales. So I see so much potential for you. Um, thank you for offering that discount for everyone. Well, and thank you to it for sharing all of it. I, I'm happy to do it. We joked when we did our Shark Tank um, producers interviews, I was like, can I hire a college girl and put an earpiece in her ear and tell her what to say? And they're like, no, you invented it, it has to be you. And I told them, I'm like, I am more TV shaped than I'm shaped for TV. And they laughed and said, no, it still has to be you. So, you're amazing. Like it's a little out of my comfort zone, but I mean, know. Aaliyah's in your group too. And they were just on um, Shark Tank and got and funded. She so. so awesome. Yeah. So awesome. And, you know, and so everything's possible. So thanks, Billy. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thank you for having me. So I know I said this in the beginning, but would you agree with me? Billy is just so amazing. I love how giving and smart she is, how much she's willing to help and support other people and how she's been through her own health journey and how that has led to her doing so much for others. The world is truly a better place with Billy and her dad in it. And I'm so incredibly honored to know her and to have worked with her and to have been her coach and to be with her in the mastermind. So whether you're new to business or you've been in business for a while, remember that not only do you need to focus on and hone in on your brand awareness, but but you also need to tap into your customers who've already purchased from you, right? That is the gold mine. So when you combine these two strategies, you'll be able to take your business to that next level, just like Billy. And don't forget, 
I'd love for you all to check out Billy's products. And we've got a link in the show notes. And she's so generous to give us the code, the product boss for 20% off. Hey, before you go, I want to remind you, and you know this, that I am on a mission to empower women all over the world to build product-based businesses that give them the security and freedom that they desire to build the life of their dreams. So I know I can help you do this by teaching you how to nail the core four foundational pillars of a standout brand. And What I've seen people do is they've gone from coming up with an idea to making a product and jumping to sell it, but they've missed the core four foundations. So I am so excited to invite you to join my totally free masterclass, your four-step playbook to stand out in a crowded market and get more customers so that you can grow your business of your dreams, no matter where you sell and no matter what you sell. In just 90 minutes, I'm going to teach you the core four foundational pieces your business might be missing, how you can stop wasting time and money on things that don't work, and how you can focus on things that are going to work instead. I also want to teach you my proven ways to build an audience that buys from you and tells their friends about you. And we're going to dig into what might be blocking you from your growth and your potential and how you can turn it around. And really, my friend, I just want to teach you how you can build a standout brand and get more customers and have more sales. It's going to be amazing. And I cannot wait for you to dive in. So come join me, grab your totally free spot and head to the productboss.com slash standout to get access. Again, head to the productboss.com slash standout to get access. Okay, so... That is the wrap of this. Now, again, one more thing to just wrap this episode with, as I said in the very beginning, please make sure you're following the show. Apple has done something where it's unsubscribed people if they haven't listened to a few episodes. So if you could just hit that follow button, you'll be sure to get the episodes delivered straight to your podcast, wherever you listen to them. And then the second thing is, and I'm absolutely loving this. I know I've been asking, it's like my one ask is, would you mind leaving a review for the podcast? And I'm just like, There's been some incredible ones. Like if you haven't left a review yet, go leave one. I'd be so honored and then read some of them. Like they're just, they're so heartfelt and they mean so much to me. So I just want to thank you if you have left a review for the show, because one, it helps me know that I'm aligned and and giving you what you need every week, twice a week. And also it helps other people out there that discover the show, make that decision on whether they want to hit that follow button, whether they want to get these episodes and whether they want to listen. Right. And then like, you know, my mission is to help you make money, you to live your dream life, you to build businesses that allow for you to, to build your dream life, right? All that freedom that comes with it. So thank you so much for the reviews. If you haven't left one yet, I'd be so, so grateful and make sure to follow the show. All right, my friends till next time. I'll see you at product class.